going here to get kaba hi how are you all doing welcome to the third lesson on the new sand language this is going to be a lesson on the more complex vowels and on the click accompaniments now this is going to be the last video on pronunciation before we get to the grammar the fun stuff and sentence construction real hoot let's look at the complex vowels first and here we have them on the top here we have the simple vowels a e i o u the next list is one that has this little diacritic here it's a little pointy circumflex in afrikaans they call it a kapi but the the linguistic name for it is a circumflex these are your nasal vowels. So instead of saying a, ah, you go a. Ah. Instead of a, eh, you go e, e, o, m. If you are familiar with the French language, these shouldn't be giving you too much of a problem. So instead, they, for people who don't have these natively in their language, think of it like you have a you have an N, but you're pronouncing it slightly at the back of your throat while you're pronouncing your vowel. So instead of saying an, you, you, you have to feel your nose vibrating while pronouncing that A. So an, ah, uh, then, you, then you try it out with the E, the I, the O, and the U. So, e, e, o, u. Now, these vowels at the bottom here are called strident vowels. And they are very difficult to describe. I can only uh, demonstrate them for you. A, e, e, o, u. You pronounce it as though you are clearing your throat. So imagine you are coughing. <coughs> that vibration in the voice box is the same sound that is made when you are pronouncing a strident vowel. Another example of the strident vowel being used in popular culture is Fat Albert when he's saying his signature catchphrase <laughs> you know um, that's the same sound that you uh, that you produce when you are pronouncing a strident vowel that's uh, trust me it's the best way I can describe it for you now we come to the click accompaniments um, these are a very complex part of the language um, for the purposes of this video I've given the accompaniments for the dental click Although these are the same accompaniments that are for the lateral click, the alveolar click, and the palatal click. Uh, there are a few accompaniments for the bilabial click, but not all of these apply to it. I've given you some examples as well of how they are used. I'm not going to go through the list and pronounce all of them individually because they don't make much sense on their own they only make they only really make sense within a word but i'll give you the names for each this one is the tenuous we've done this before in the first video i've given a small k there but um that's only for the explanation of the next one which is the voiced click next is the glottal release click the nasal click the aspirated click, the delayed aspiration click, the velar fricative release click, the uvular plosive release click, the aspirated uvular plosive click, and the velar affricate release click. Now, the word I've given you is toba for the tenuous click. It shouldn't give you too much trouble if you've been practicing. Now, the, the next one requires some explanation. 
to, which means to lie, to. Now, at the back of the mouth, when you're pronouncing a click, the tongue raises up towards the velum. Now, for the tenuous click, this velar closure is voiceless. But for the voiced click, it's basically the same as a G. When you pronounce the, the tenuous click, it's like a K, but for the voice click, it's like a G. So you, instead of saying ta, you're saying da. You must try it out, and you'll you'll feel the, the difference if you think of it like you're pronouncing a G. Now, the glottal release click is basically the same as you have your click here, and then there's a glottal stop after it. If you are familiar with IPA symbols, you know what a glottal stop is. It's basically a small pause. Like when you, like if you're British and you want to say butter, you don't say butter, you say butter. That small pause that you make is called a glottal stop. And that's what the apostrophe represents. So for the word an, which means a tongue, you pronounce the, the click and there's a small glottal stop in between the un and the click, so it's un. Shouldn't give you too much problems, it's a very easy one to do. The next one is called the nasalized click, Mui, which means a spider. So you're holding an N, and while you're holding that N, you're pronouncing the click. It's easier than you think. So you're saying mm -hmm. You're holding an in and pronouncing the click while you're doing it. It's surprisingly simple. Now the aspirated click is basically you pronounce the click with a rush of air behind it. So you build air behind the, the glottis and then you pronounce the click and then when you pronounce it some air rushes out comes out like an H. Tisi, which means mantis. Tisi. The next one is called the delayed aspiration click, which you pronounce the click and then there's a small delay and then you pronounce an H. So Hoomsi, Hoomsi. You pronounce the, the click and a small rush of air after it. You know, little delay. Kumsi. Oh, I forgot to translate that. This one means a soul. Kumsi means soul. Now, the velar fricative release is where you pronounce that that kh sound after the click. But you release the click into it. You, there's no delay in between. So for the example I've given you is tcho which means to play music. You basically build pressure behind the velum before you pronounce the click. And then once you've done that, you pronounce the click and then you pronounce the, the velar click, or the, the velar fricative right after it. So it's like one smooth motion. Now we get to the velar plosive. No, not the velar, the uvular plosive. Sorry, I was getting confused there. Um, now, if you are familiar with the velar plosive, that is in English spelt with a K. You pronounce that K, K. But the, the uvular plosive is pronounced like a K, but further back in the throat. So instead of a K, it's a K, K. And then when you pronounce, let me focus right there. There we go. When you pronounce this click, you pronounce that followed by the uvular plosive. So the word I've given you is ka, which means to shine. Ka. There's a small delay in between, but not enough to put an apostrophe there. There's no glottal stop. It's it's like peeling back. So you pronounce the followed by the ka. So ka. Ugh, damn it. forgot to write the H in there. The next one is 
basically the same as this, except you're aspirating the the uvular plosive. So instead of saying ka, you're saying ka, ka. The word I've given you here is kui, which means a vulture. Kui. You there's a puff of air after that that uvular plosive. Kui. This last one is the velo affricate. So instead of saying kh, you're saying kh. This is spelt in mu when it's not preceded by a click by say with a kx. Kh, kh. Like for example the word kh-u, which means to do. Kh-u. Kh-obea. Which means to be lazy. If you think an easy way to remember it is, is it's basically the same as a velar release or a velar fricative release, but there's a small glottal stop after it. So, now these accompaniments it's also work with I can, the other clicks, obviously. So, for example, uh, let's have the word. Which means, uh, which means what is it? it means a jawbone. Dainsi. Remember that's a nasal vowel, so it's an R. Uh, Another example is Khosi, which means a smoking pipe. Mm. Oh yeah, for the bilabial click, nasalization is done with an M. So for example, Mwah, which means a cat. Or Mwusi, eh, which means a louse. Now you must... If you if you want more words to practice with, there's a um, there's a book that I would highly recommend that you get. That is Omachilmed Kekut Chatcha Nu, which means Omachilmed teaches Nu. I will. It's free to download. Anyone can download it. I'll put the link in the description. Um, in the next lesson, we will be going over basic sentences. Now, I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Nasi mui u. Kwenkia.